Welcome to the podcast. Today's guest is Rob Theobald. Rob, welcome. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me on. That's right. So I've seen um, from some of your pictures, you've been keeping busy in this lockdown period. So what have you been doing? In fact, what is your job role? Tell us about that first and then we'll move on uh, to that. Yeah, so I've recently started working for Nash as a content creator. Um, mm-hmm. It was very recently, just before this kicked off. So now this is happening. I've been spending a lot of time at home, just set up a little studio and just been doing little uh, little bits of stuff for them. Right. So is it all sort of product-based stuff that you do? Yeah, um, it's uh, for the sales, really. So a lot of the stuff mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing is based around products, but with what's going on... Um, I've been doing a little few how-tos and just just general sort of content, really. Yeah, no, good. So have you um, got all the kit yourself? Are you, I mean, are you into sort of video and photography anyway? Is that how it come about? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously they've kicked me out with everything I need to do to do the job, um, but mm-hmm. obviously I have my own kit as well. Prior to doing it for Nash, obviously, uh, I worked at Ridge Monkey a couple of years ago doing very similar sort of role uh, and a bit of freelance stuff, so... Yeah, I mean, videography and photography, it's something I sort of stumbled into, really. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a tattooist, or was a tattooist for like nine years. So right. coming from that sort of background, obviously, I had a bit of an eye for design and what looks nice. And mm-hmm. I kind of just stumbled into filming stuff. And and here I am today. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it seems like quite a common um, route that people go down with it. You sort of maybe get into the photography side and then get a bit curious with the video i mean yeah, how have you found that it's almost like starting again isn't it when you when you start to learn the video side of it yeah it is i mean it is to a degree i mean obviously you've got to understand your camera and the settings which is a whole thing in itself but the essence of just making something look right look nice it's very similar to photography really i mean once you get mm-hmm. to grips with your camera then it's like i say it's very very similar to just taking stills really if it looks nice yeah. and, it, and it, it works then it works Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Um, so, what in terms of setup? Obviously, cause you're working from home. What have you done? If, is it like have you got an office or somewhere uh, where you can set it up in? Or? No, unfortunately not. I mean, I, I'm I'm in a one bedroom flat at the moment with my right. with my missus. She's also yeah. working from home, so it's <laughs> it's a little bit it's a little bit tight, a little bit stressful. But essentially, I've sort of cornered off a quarter of our living room. Um, right. I've just made a, a very sort of makeshift studio set up, really. Uh, mm-hmm. but it's plenty it's enough enough for what i'm doing at the moment uh and it keeps me busy with all this going on so can't complain yeah. so what is it sort of um tackle and pop-ups and stuff like that you're doing yeah i mean we i'm in the process of doing a few national house little sort of how to tie rigs and, and setting up certain mm-hmm. things um a few bits with bait as well um there's a few ideas on paper it's just a matter of sort of getting them getting them going and getting them down now um, but I'm sure you'll sort of see them over the next few months or a few yeah. weeks, probably. But yeah, yeah. How does that work then? Do you are you given stuff? Are you are you given like a thing, like a a checklist you have to work through? Or do they just basically um, say we need stuff? Yeah, on here? no. I mean, it's, they've sort of you imagine. yeah. Basically, I mean, we've got. I've spoken. We've all obviously spoken, and there's a few ideas that bounce about things they want done, um, and then I've sort of been left to to get them done, um, which I right. like to be honest. I think when you're doing something creative anything creative if you're sort of bound too much by what someone wants mm. you're not able to really just do what you think is going to be good if you know what i mean so yeah, it's definitely. nice they sort of left me to get on with it and um and yeah so far it's going well oh brilliant no it's good to hear yeah. um so obviously we're all locked down we're on what is the day is it monday oh, i don't <laughs> know mate yeah, yeah you have to really stop and think yeah monday <laughs> every day so, yeah it's monday um one in terms of your own fishing, have you got any sort of decent stories that we can talk about there? Um, decent stories, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, the last few years, I'd focus. I've been focusing mainly fishing the rivers. Um, mm-hmm. It just gives me such more of a buzz than 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 the lakes and that used to really. I, you know, I, obviously, I fish club lakes and day tickets and syndicates. Uh, as well occasionally i kind of go wherever i think i'm going to get a bite but the last few years i've focused solely on the rivers um and yeah i mean there's always there's always something interesting going on on the river to be fair um but yeah i mean yeah. fishing off the boat has been a massive edge for me this year i, I oh, invested nice. in a little inflatable yeah and, and that really opened up the river to me from just sort of trudging up and down the banks trying to look from the bank 
as soon as you're on that yeah. water straight away you can see things you just can never see and and that really yeah. got the buds going for me then i thought wow this is this is a whole other level of fishing um yeah. and yeah so the last year or two i've been doing that and i've had pretty pretty decent year to be fair i've, I've caught a few of the ones i wanted so yeah yeah and i suppose being a river you're got a good chance through the colder months as well have you as well yeah i mean to be honest um when the colder months kicked in i have actually sort of looked away from carp fishing and, and sort of focused on the perch and the pike a little bit more right. i mean that's the beauty yeah. of the river you can fish yeah. all year round for whatever species is, mm-hmm. is is prime you know so but yeah through the summer months i'm you know all about the carp really um and they're much more well, they're catchable in the winter as well, but they're much, much more catchable in the summer, and they're much more right. easy to find as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the, the river's really been been the one for me, um, yeah. and I, I mean, I recently bought a proper boat as well. I've just recently bought a hard bottom thirteen footer. Yeah. Prior to the Terry video coming out, I'll just say, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, that that now next year or once this is all sort of once we're off this lockdown, that's going to. Uh, start so that should be interesting yeah it should work out just about right then yeah hopefully it's opening season june June by june we should all be back to it and hopefully we'll get do a bit of fishing oh nice was it um sort of quite overwhelming at at the start going onto a river when you've been used to fishing still waters yeah it is a little bit i mean the thing is with the with the still waters you know there's only x amount of water and you know there's x amount of fish and you know Mm -hmm. that's one of the things that sort of after a while for me, a lot of the places I was fishing, I kind of knew where I'd find them or I knew how to catch them. And so it got a little bit stale. And the rivers, mm. it's a whole other game. You know, they could be mm. anywhere. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's a lot simpler fishing. You don't have to worry so much about a lot of the stuff you might do when you're fishing in these clubs and, and the lakes and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, finding them is the key. And it's just <laughs> spending time spending time on the river. Well, I suppose there's always that... Um bit of an element of unknown yeah. again as well yeah that's you know, it like the old days yeah definitely every time you get a bite i mean they're not massive fish on the river you're not going to be going and catching mm. some you know but every single bite you just don't know what it's going to be and it don't matter if it's four or five pound common it's just as rewarding mm. as a 20 yeah. 30 you know so yeah i mean the rivers i mean especially i mean i've been fishing the chelmer it's a local river to me and mm. i mean this there's rumors and you hear this and you hear that but you just never know until you, until it's in the net, until you, or until you've seen it with your own eyes. It, it could be anything in there, you know, and that's what's exciting to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you sort of had a bit of a result, or you had one that you're after. Can you yeah. talk to us a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I never really tried to focus on one fish on the river because it's kind of mm-hmm. hard to do because they could be anywhere, you know. But I had seen a particular fish. It had been caught a few times from a certain stretch. Um, and once, I, and once I'd seen it myself in the water, that was it. I thought, right, I want to catch that one. Um, and, yeah, all year I'd come close to it two, three times, really. I had it on my spa. I, I had it taking bread off the surface at one point, but never actually caught it. Um, and then, yeah, the boat come about, uh, and I was getting closer and closer to this fish, and I'd seen it so many times it was silly. Um, and then took a week off. Decided for whatever reason I wasn't going to fish that week. Took a week off. Come back the following week to find I had a dirty great hole in my inflatable where the mice had got it. Uh, yeah, and it sort of put me out of action for for a good couple of well three or four weeks I think before I got a replacement. Right. And in that time yeah. it got caught by someone I knew, so mm. really sort of was a bit of a kick because I kind of thought if I'd have kept going at that sort of pace and how close I was to it, you know, mm. there's a chance I would have had it. Um, but yeah, as soon as I got the boat back. It was like double down, all guns blazing. I've got to catch this fish now. So I spent a lot of time, two probably two days a week, two nights a week, whatever, on there, and hadn't seen it. It really was getting like it just gone, you know. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think it was like it honestly got down to the, the wire. It was like my last session before winter really kicked in. Mm. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. I've got a day free. I'm going to go give it a go. And it was, it was absolutely hammering down with rain. It was like really shit. And I thought what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Like, you know, it's done. Like, wait till next year. I was there and I thought, right, come on in, we'll get it out. And off we went. And, you know, it's, it's typical. Like, it was hammering down with writing. The boat was filling up with water and I was sitting there really feeling 
down about it, you know, thinking, oh, mm. should be doing something else in my time. And um, yeah, really weird little bite. It seemed like a bream. You catch a lot of bream. It was like a breamy type bite. Yeah. Lifted into it like it was a bream, you know, a little bit sort of, oh, another one. Mm. And it instantly pulled back, you know, like, and it was the most mm. immense boat battle shoot that uh, ensued from that point. It was, uh, I wish someone had view- could see it, you know, it was just tying me around. It was, it was insane. And I knew what fishing was as well because it, it pretty much broke the surface the second I hooked it. So, like, right. you know, it was, I was panicking, net was all tangled around the boat and <laughs> I swooped it in. And yeah, and I knew what fishing was straight away. And it just was mental. Yeah. You know, I was soaked through to the bone and couldn't be happier. And it was just like, yeah. it was quite, um, <laughs> quite a moment, really. I sort of ticked it off. I'd done it, you know. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's yeah, probably it all sort of fades away, doesn't it? Yeah. When all the bad stuff, when when it goes good. Oh, exactly, mate. That's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, instantly, all the time, all the all of the blanks and all of the hard work just melts away because you've got this fish. Yeah. It's there. It's yours. You know. So, yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's really of recent years. That's probably my most memorable, just because the amount of effort I put into it. Like I yeah. really, really, really wanted that fish. You know. And I'd not really done that before, really. Like, I never focused on one fish and thought, well, I want to catch that. I've, yeah. I've always kind of just, you know, I'm not a big carp angler, but I like catching carp. So mm-hmm. I've always just kind of gone wherever I thought was the best place to catch a bite, get a bite, you know. So yeah. this was the first fish that I really thought, no, nah, you know, I'm, everything goes into this, you know. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I've done it. So happy day. And. Obviously, with it being on a river, was there like a niggle in the back of your mind that you could be really far from that fish at some point? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, where I caught that fish, it, it was the, it's the end of the stretch, you know, it's the end of right. the river, essentially. Um, and it, it, it's frequently lived there for, for a few years now, I think. Um, I know it's been caught there. I mean, it has been caught much further up, two, three, four stretches up, but that was a long time right. ago. Um, and I can't, it's obviously a bit of an older fish as well, so I can't really see it going far. So I kind of knew it was in there, you know, that's why I kept fishing that particular stretch. Um, I mean, even though it's not the most exciting stretch to fish and it's quite difficult to fish really, because a lot of it, you're not allowed to fish. Um, I mean, fishing on the boat was my edge because I was on a boat. It allowed me to fish in areas where you're not allowed to fish from the bank. Um, right. So yeah, I mean that was um, that was really a massive, massive edge towards catching it, I think. But yeah, oh, nice. Um, in terms of like nuisance fish, obviously you said bream are a bit of a problem. Yeah. Is there sort of chub and everything else in there as well? Yeah, I mean the chelmer has got a pretty good good head of chub. To be fair, some nice chub. Um, that particular area is stacked with bream, and I mean right. it's mad. It got to a point where. You, you kind of know every fourth or fifth bite will be a carp or might be a carp, you right. know. Um, and some of them are big, big brain, you know. I was, I was sort of unhooking them and flopping them back. And there was one night I, I, I hooked it. It was about one o'clock in the morning or whatever. And I flopped it back and I thought, that brain was massive, you know. If you was really targeting brain, you'd be over the moon with that. Yeah. And I literally yeah. unhooked it in the net and flopped it back, you know. So, uh, yeah, brain are a nuisance. But... It's all part of the course. It's all part of it, you know. The river, really, every time you get a bite, could be anything. You know, it might not be. Yeah. You get taken out by stuff constantly. So there's a lot of, like, recasting and repositioning. You kind of get used to yeah. it after a while, you know. Yeah. And were you sort of fishing quite far from the boat or not? No, I mean, no. When I caught that fish, I wasn't. I was literally fishing over the spot um, with just one rod, <laughs> little sawn off. A lot of the time I was doing that through the day, I would just float over the spot drop my rig, handful of bait, and then float back, you know, just far enough off the spot, tie mm-hmm. off to whatever I could or drop drop a drop a anchor and and fish really close to the spots. It was just it made sense to me because because mm-hmm. the amount of bream you get you catch as well, having to row back out or cast back out, it was a it's a pain. So if you're really close mm-hmm. to the spot, you you know, you can you can deal with it really quickly, get the rod back out, sit back again, you know. Um, yeah. And it made it more exciting as well when you hook it because you're hooking it under the rod tip, you know, and, and yeah. then that's it. Then it's off, you know, and <laughs> and it tells you about. So, yeah. Was it quite snaggy there as well or not? Not that particular spot. No, there's a lot of boat traffic and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of moorings and stuff along there. So in the open water, it's, it's, it's fairly clean and clear, to be honest. Yeah. There's always stuff, you know, carrier bags mm-hmm. or whatever else that's floating about. But as mm-hmm. far as some of the other stretches go, no, it's, it's actually really quite, 
it's quite clean and clear to be fair yeah oh nice yeah. so are you going to be doing more of the same after the lockdown yes definitely i mean yeah 100 yeah, percent. i mean the new boat like i say that i've spent lockdown organizing that painting that getting that ready to go um mm-hmm. i think as soon as this is over hopefully by june you know that's the mm-hmm. beginning of the season again and I wouldn't really have missed much fishing, if you know what I mean, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. So, yeah, come June, if everything's all good to go, then the, the big boat's coming out. And um, I'm going to give it a year on the Chelma with the boat just to get used to boating and get used to using it. And then I think I'm going to step up to the Thames, like the big boy league, I think. That'll be yeah. the next step. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And how far are you away from the Thames? Um, so I'm in Benfleet, Essex. So right. to be fair... It takes me 40 odd minutes to get roughly to get where I want to get in on the Chelmo, and it's only probably mm. about an hour, you know, to get to the Thames. So, okay, for what it's worth, it's probably worth doing the extra bit of journey, isn't it? You know, so yeah. I, just, I, I would hit it straight away and go up there, but obviously, I haven't done proper boating, you know, with a boat, and I think it's probably a wise idea to get get familiar with a boat before I go going onto the Thames. You know, that that's a proper yeah. river, you know, so. And dealing with all the locks. And yeah, else. exactly. Yeah, and the, and the tidal yeah. bits. You know, dealing with the boat swinging and whatnot. I mean, I'm fairly, I'm fairly competent on a boat. You know, I've fished off of boats and stuff before, but it's a bit different fishing off of a boat and actually sailing a boat around. You know, so yeah, yeah. no, yeah, shit, it's exciting though, man. It, it, this is the thing. I mean, I love fishing, all all forms of fishing, especially carp fishing. But recent mm. years, I was getting a little bit. Not losing it, but I don't know. Yeah, a little, a little bit. Um, and then it's yeah. the, the the boat element to it, and the river side of things. It's just like a breath of fresh air. It's something completely yeah. different, and it's something I don't know. So I'm learning, and it's like it's just so much more exciting for me at the minute. Mm. That's really good, mate. Yeah. When um, when did you sort of make that change, then from the still water side to to the running water? Um, well, I mean, like I say solely fished on the rivers for the last two this will be the third season prior to that obviously i fish all over here and there but i have fished other rivers before bigger rivers you know abroad and stuff so uh, i was quite lucky i fished in canada on the st lawrence and i fished the ebro oh, wow. and i fished a river in belgium so i had had experience on rivers and realized wow this is like totally different this is so much yeah. more um What's the word? Like, you know, it's vast. It's massive. It's mm. not, you know, mm. you can never learn it. It'll always change. Every time you go mm. to the river, it changes. So, like, um, that gave me a little bit of a fire for it. And then, yeah, the last couple of years, I'd seen a few lads had caught some fish out of the Chelmer, out of the river near me, and I, I just thought, I'm going to have a go on that. And that was it then. And, yeah, the other side of it is it's, it's, it's free, you know, essentially. You know, yeah. once you've got your VOD licence and if you've got a boat, you've got to get that all licensed and insured. But other than that, you're free to do what you like, you know, and yeah. and that that sort of appealed to me as well, you know. Um, no, no. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. If we um, – one bit that I'm sort of trying to include into the podcast yeah. is just about um, watercraft. Yeah. How sort of any tips or sort of um, any three top sort of important aspects of watercraft okay. that you can chat to us about? Anything yeah. that you do? I might just suppose with the river, it might be a bit. Well, yeah, I can. I can. I mean, mate, it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? It's all the usual yeah. thing, you know. Keep your eyes open, find them. I mean, yeah. time is a massive thing for me as well. Right, I think the time. Are we doing this now? Or are we gonna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Oh, right, um, yeah, I mean, time for me is probably one of the biggest edges. I know that's a bit cliche and everyone says find them and glasses and all the usual things. We all use the same skills to to, to find fish with watercraft. Mm. But I think for me, like time not fishing is a massive edge, like as in right. just watching them. Yeah. I spend a lot of my time not actually with rods out, you know, I'll go fishing for the day and I might not even put my rods out all day. I'll spend all day, even if I find them, sometimes yeah. I'll just watch them because you'll see mm. things that you wouldn't if you just spotted a few fish, run and go get the gear and start fishing. If you watch them for yeah. an hour or two, you start figuring out, oh, actually, well, they come in from this side or, you know, they don't come, you know, you'll spot mannerisms about certain things that 
you know, I think give you a massive, yeah. massive edge, especially on the river. They're very, very, as much as they're very nomadic, they've also got very much, there's, there's, there's paths, there's ways they come into spots and stuff, like on, mm-hmm. like on lakes as well. But I think on the yeah. river, it's more important to get where they're going. They're not going to come right. off the path and come and try and find your bait, I don't think. You need to have it where they're going, you know. Um, and for me, yeah, like watching them is a massive edge. Um, okay. How clear is the water there when you're on the river? It really depends. It depends on, obviously, the weather leading yeah. up to it, you know, um, and how far down the stretches you are. You know, obviously, there's a lot of locks all the way down. By the time you get right down the end, it slows that water enough that it's always pretty still and quite clear. Uh, but, you know, if it has a heavy rain or, you know, there's large portions of the season that are wiped out if, if it's just been hammering down because you just can't yeah. fish. Um, and then, yeah, then, I mean, baiting is then the key, I think, really. I mean, that's the other side to rivers. I think you can put bait almost anywhere. If you put it in with any amount of regularity, you will find carp there eventually. Um, mm. so, you know, as much as I say, watching them, finding them is the key, probably baiting is probably the key because yeah. it honestly, they, they, they will find your feed and the more you put in, the more fish will come, you know, it sounds right. mad, but it's true. Yeah. Um, were you sort of trying to do anything to deter the bream when you were baiting? No, not really. I mean, my hook baits I use on the river, I tend to use like double hook baits or big baits as big as I can get away with but I found no matter how big I did bream will always mm. find a way of getting them you know so yeah. I think there's no getting around the bream if you're fishing the rivers you've almost got to accept that as part of it um, and embrace it really you know sometimes you catch a bream and you think ah oh, bream but you know that okay that spot's rocking there's fish down there and just yeah. by the bream being there it's a matter of time the carp will follow you know so yeah yeah, I don't try and avoid the – obviously, I don't really want to be catching them, especially early hours in the morning. Mm-hmm. But I think it's worth – you know, if I catch 10 bream, if it means at the end I catch a carp, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Does it get busy on there as well or not? Um, it fluctuates, to be fair. I mean, obviously, the beginning of the seasons, it gets busy. And if you'll find as well, you know, obviously, like lakes as well, if – people have caught fish and then publicise them or, or you know, there's a video out about river fishing or whatever it is, you might find there's a few more people. But honestly, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much, I don't think, with the rivers either. It's never that right. busy. You know, it's never busy like a, a day ticket would be or or anywhere really because, yeah. you know, you, 50, 60 yards down the bank, you're on your own again, you know, like, yeah. and, and so because no one really fishes super close to you on the river. I mean, there is a little bit of etiquette still, I've found, you know, people tend to go and want to do their own thing. So if they see you there, they, they go as far away as they can, I think, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah it's never that busy, uh, really. No, good. That's good. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? It sounds like proper fishing. Yeah, I think it is, to be honest. I mean, you know, everyone fishes for different reasons. Everyone gets different things out of fishing. But for me, mm-hmm. being able to just go and disappear by myself, do my own thing, and catch yeah. off my own merit, like off my own work, you know what I mean? Not knowing this to yeah. him, that spot. It's like, um, it's much more rewarding. Like I say, even if the fish is like a lot smaller, that it's just yeah. as rewarding because you think, and also it's the, the peace and quiet, mate. I mean, I, as I'm getting older, I'm appreciating that more and more and more. And like, yeah, yeah I like to just go and not be bothered by anyone who's going yeah. fish, you know? Um, and, yeah. and the river definitely, definitely supplies that for you. Yeah, I bet you get to see some pretty amazing um, natural things as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you do. I mean, you go anywhere outside and stay quiet long enough, and you'll see all sorts Mm. of stuff, don't you? Um, But the river can be quite can be quite interesting. Yeah, Uh, I mean, there's the odd otter about. I mean, I'll be honest. I've not actually. Oh, actually, that's a lie. I have seen one. Yeah, I've seen one in the time I've been on there. Um, Right. But they are about, and that, that's another thing with the rivers. I think a lot of people are discouraged by all of that. They think, oh, you know, there's no fish in there. The otters have had them, or, you know, this person's had them. Yeah. And a lot of the time, if you do actually spend any amount of time on any local river to yourself, you'll see it's probably not the case. Most of our rivers are in really, really good conditions. And like, hmm. the fishing, all species of fish, you know, especially on the Chelmer, are in really, really good condition. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, yeah, the, 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 the nature side of things as well, I think being away, being far enough away from people, um, it obviously gives you a different perspective on it all, doesn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, do you get many kingfishers and things? Yeah, or? yeah, get all sorts, really. Um, I mean, I'm not... I, in the last few years, I've definitely been paying a bit more attention to like different bird species, trying to sort of spot them. Mm. I know the I know the, the obvious ones, you know. Um, mm. But yeah, you get kingfishers and, and, and all sorts over there, mate, to be fair. Yeah, no, nice. Um, one question I've got from the last guest. It's quite a good one, actually, uh, if I can ask you that. It's what's the smallest change um, in your fishing that's made the biggest difference? The smallest change has made the biggest difference. Small change. The smallest change I've made to my own fishing, and I think it has made a massive difference, is mm. uh, is confidence in a rig. So yeah. when I was, you know, going younger and for a long time, I would be very keen to like, oh, try this new rig, or that looks like that works. I'll give that a go. Um, yeah. And you always sort of end up coming back to what you know eventually. And a couple of years ago, I sort of made a conscious decision that, right, this rig I use, I use for all situations, balanced, bottom, pop-up, that works for everything. Slip day rig yeah. covers everything in my mind. And yeah. I stuck to it. And now from that point on, I've never, that rig thing in my mind is ticked off. And so I can mm-hmm. concentrate so much more on actually just getting on them and catching them. And I think... Yeah. That is, it's a very small change just to say, right, that's my rig. I don't have to think about that. That's an element that gets taken out of the equation now, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, no, definitely. And yeah, definitely to worry about. yeah, and it's definitely given me more fish. When you're sitting around messing around tying rigs and doing this, I've got 10 of the, the, the rig ready, you know, because that's my rig I use. So that's, it saves time. It saves confusion about what approach to take. Mm-hmm. And it, it, ultimately, I think it gives you a bit more time to actually catch fish. Yeah. Oh, nice answer that one, mate. Yeah. Um, how do you find the wind affects the river, if at all? Um, I, it doesn't really. I mean, no. you'll find it, it really depends on what part of the river you're on, depending on how the how the wind's going to hit it, you know. Yeah. Um, and again, the flow is already going that way already, you know. So wind to me, I've not found, I mean, I might be wrong, but I've not found the wind to be much of a factor the only time i found it to be a factor is when i fished in like like basins or bigger bigger wider stiller parts of the lake or parts of the river sorry um then yeah maybe if the wind's pumping into one particular side of it then it's worth Mm. a look but as far as general river goes there's it doesn't really play much of a fact much of a part in it to me yeah Uh, no that makes sense yeah i think um the, like, yeah, I think it's more um, the flow and the rain. You know, that's the biggest mm-hmm. thing. You've got to keep an eye on the rain. If it, if it rained three, four days ago heavily, you know for the next two, three days, it's pretty much a write-off. Um, right. So, yeah, keeping an eye on the weather, as far as weather goes, it's more rain than wind, to be honest. Right. Why does it affect it so much, Rob? Well, because obviously you get a lot of the, well, I mean, First of all, it's obviously the clarity. You know, straight away you've gone from being fairly clear. Sometimes I guess that can help in certain situations, but it doesn't help for finding them, which, like I say, a lot of the time that's what I try to do. Um, obviously, you've got the, uh, the, the the all the water that flows off the land and stuff is is washing in mud and shit, and bits of trees are flowing through. So it just makes the river a lot harder to actually fish. Um, right. As well as obviously now there's a little bit more flow going through. There's a likelihood the fish will push with that. Possibly, you know, if they're not, you know, they're going to they're going to move down the stretch further. Um, mm-hmm. but again, I mean, that's not that's an, the river fish do what they like. It, that's not really a rule, if you know what I mean. They'll go yeah. wherever. But yeah, I think if it's if it's flowing hard and it's, it's you know the colour's really murky, and it just makes it a lot more difficult. To be fair, yeah. Um, do you think the rivers are going to be a bit busier after seeing Tal's video? <laughs> um, possibly. I think I think there'd be a lot of people going out buying boats potentially, um, yeah. which obviously is ironic because I've obviously just got one, so it'd be yeah. typically busy. But no, I mean I think after any good video, especially with someone like Terry, who is so influential, as soon as anything goes out, there's always a bit of a spike in that, that yeah. an interest in that field. 
Um, mm-hmm. But it does take a bit of dedication, to be honest, to fish the rivers. It's not yeah. for everybody. And, you know, you've got mm. to be willing to sort of not catch as well a lot of the time. So, mm. yeah, I think people give it a go. And it's like I say, it's not for everybody. I think it, you know, quite quickly cut out people that are serious about it and who, who are just having a dabble. Mm. So your new boat is it one that you can actually sleep in or not? Yeah, yeah, it's got a little hot, it's got a little cubby and that. I mean, I can just about get in it. It's thirteen right. foot in total, so obviously I can tow mm-hmm. it, and it's in the garage at the minute. Um, yeah. And yeah, I can just about get in there. But I've got a nice, I've got a canopy for it and that. So I've yeah. not, I've not been out on it. I've not been out on it. I've not slept on it for the night. So I'm sort of looking right. forward to actually doing all those things once we're allowed out. Yeah, yeah, I bet. So I suppose you can have a a good bit of pootling around if there's still some close season left. Oh, yeah. Well, that was my plan, you know. I was just going to spend yeah. the whole close season just with the missus at the weekend, just boating mm-hmm. about, boating, baiting, and just sort of getting used to it. Obviously, yeah. that's now all been cut out. So, as soon as, um, soon as we're back to it, it's straight into fishing off of it, I think. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice, mate. That's yeah. still good, though. Um, and have you got a question that we can ask our next guest, please? Uh, okay, yeah. So... Obviously, um, there's so many different approaches to catching carp, you know, zig fishing, bottom bait, et cetera, et cetera. But if you had to fish with one approach, one method forever for the rest of your fishing, what would it be? One approach, slash method. Cool. Okay, mate. Um, have you got anything else you want to bring up or talk about or any questions that I should have asked you? Oh, I don't know, mate. I don't think so. I think... Um, I don't really know. I think we covered a few bits, didn't we? Honestly, it's been yeah. a bit of a weird. It went a bit weird. Then I just sort of spoke, and I can't remember what I said. So no, it's fine, mate. That's <laughs> what I mean. That's what I said. It's it's um, it's just a chat, yeah. really. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's been good. Um, what about just before we go, then, Rob? People, because there's probably going to be a few people that are going to be looking to get into river fishing. Can you give them any tips if they're brand new to it, like in terms of either gear or location or baiting or anything? Um tips for the river yeah Mm. i mean when it comes to gear and and terminal tackle and all that sort of stuff you haven't got to go crazy the fish generally are not as riggy you know they're quite simple Mm. to catch just make sure it's strong and sturdy um Mm. you know step it up a little bit maybe to what you'd normally be fishing and locate locate them like i said before you know walking and finding fish and if you can't find them visually you know if you go out two or three times you can't find them can't find them Find a likely looking spot somewhere that you think they're going to be and bait mm-hmm. it. And bait it mm-hmm. fairly heavy and just make a point of coming back and checking it in a few days, a week, and do that for long enough. And eventually, I can almost guarantee there'll be carp there. Yeah, that's a nice tip, mate. Yeah, what's this sort of like slack water, yeah. overhanging trees? Naggy stuff areas, like that. yeah. I mean, you'll find them in the weirdest places. Sometimes what looks like the best place isn't always the best place, you know? Yeah. They know what they want at certain times a year, I assume. So, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, any weir pools, anywhere there's a bit of oxygen coming into the water, any snaggy areas where they can hide and get out of the, out of the flow, you know, into the lee of the flow. Um, Mm -hmm. And during the winter months, anywhere that's, going to give them a little bit more warmth you know whether it's the sun on it an area or boats that are moored up that are living you know people are living in them yeah. it's the same thing as fishing on on lakes you know it's watercraft is exactly the same you just got to adapt it for a river you know they still want the same things mm-hmm. they still want oxygen they still want warmth they still want food you know yeah nice do they get spooked by the sort of boats going past or not no i mean I'm, I'm, I'm sure they do. Life, yeah, they it? must be used to it. I mean, honestly, what I was finding was if I was going, because obviously I've got a little electric outboard and I've got some oars as well. Um, mm-hmm. And as much as they're used to boats going over them all the time, they, I don't know they like it. They still feel spooked, so they disappear, you know, when they come back. Mm. But I was finding that when I was catching them and I was using the electric outboard to go back out, drop a rig or, or, or go mm-hmm. back out over the spot, it would take a lot longer than if I'd rowed out and put a bait out. So they definitely do pick up to the sound of a motor, even an electric motor. I'm sure they know that that's something they've got to avoid. Yeah, I suppose it's quite loud under the water, isn't it, the vibrations? Yeah, exactly. It's vibrations, I'm assuming. And and I'm sure they're way more tuned into any any disturbance than we could ever be, you know. So by rowing out and dropping a bait and rowing back, you know, 
rather than waiting an hour or two before they were back and I was catching them, 15 minutes yeah. later, they were still on the spot. And it was like <laughs> quite apparent that they don't like the motor. But I mean, right. bigger rivers, more traffic. I'm assuming the carp are probably used to it more. I suppose it depends on where you're fishing. But, you know, just being discreet, as discreet as you can, is obviously going to give you an edge wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah, how deep was that spot you were fishing? Um, it was about nine foot, nine ten foot. Right. Yeah, I mean okay. it's where boats tend to moor up along there, so it's a bit deeper. Yeah. That's, that's for the boats, but again, finding slightly deeper areas of the river is another quite good tip as well. To be honest, no matter what time okay. of year, they do tend to. They might not be in the deepest part, but they always seem to be near it, you know, or around it. I think they just like right. the option of being able to dip down into somewhere a bit deeper. Mm. Yeah, because I suppose it's further away from everything, isn't it? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, sometimes. I mean, honestly, sometimes, I mean, you don't know with a river. Until you sort of go down it with the, with a sand or with a stick or yeah. a product, sometimes you'll be going along and out of nowhere, you'll find a massive drop off. It'll drop only a foot or two. But it's yeah. quite a big difference if most of the stretch is six foot and that it's eight, you know. So, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you'll tend to find carp near them a lot of the time, especially in the winter. Oh, okay. Did you catch of any other sort of like big roach or anything like that when you were fishing for the carp? Um, apart from the bream and tench, I caught a really nice yeah. tench to be fair. Again, it's one of those things that like I think, oh, that was probably a massive a PB tench. You know, right. I flopped it back and didn't take a photo because I wasn't really going for it. And at the time yeah. it was a nuisance. But yeah, I mean, you do always catch the odd, no roach to be fair, but bream and tench are sort of a given mm. really, to be honest. Um yeah. But yeah, it's like I say, it's part of the part of the parcel of fishing on the rivers. Yeah, yeah, such a diverse, yeah, um, sort of range of species in there. Isn't oh, there's all sorts, mate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that, like I say, that's the other thing as well. I suppose, like you can um, once I might not be carp fishing, for example, during the winter, I'll be you know pike fishing on there. Um, mm. But just by being there and fishing, I'm still fishing. I'm still if I spot carp or I see something, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, you're. There's so many times, and even while I'm carp fishing, if I'm carp fishing and I see perch hitting fryer, which happened quite a lot through through the summer, when yeah. it come round to them fishing for perch that year, I kind of knew, well, well, I've seen some good ones down here, you know. So, yeah, and and I was lucky enough we did have a couple of them. So, yeah, yeah. I mean that's the thing with the river. There's, there's there's so much fishing, you know. Not just I was carp fishing. That. If you, if if you had like a little um, jigging rod or spinning yeah. rod set up when you were carp fishing, yeah, just to flick out the other side of the boat. Yeah, or I do. I I. Don't really tend to, though, in honesty. I mean, I could, but mm. when I'm carp fishing, I'm carp fishing. And when I'm perch fishing, I'm perch fishing, you know. So I try yeah. not to to do too much because, again, you know, casting little jigs and bouncing them around, as much as it probably won't disturb the carp, mm. it might, you know. So when I'm carp fishing, I tend not to. But but just by being there, just by watching and seeing things, yeah. you know, you're fishing, essentially. You're learning. Yeah, so, you're learning. Yeah. yeah. Cool, awesome. All right, mate. Um, right, one, one last thing, and then we'll wrap up. Just I'm getting everyone to um, do a sketch of a car. <laughs> okay, <me>. cool, yeah. <laughs> In 60 seconds, um, just video it, yeah. and at the end, take a picture and just ping it across to me. Right, okay. I'm just going to do like a little fun competition right, okay. at the end of lockdown. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. A little bit of pressure as a tattooist there. I think I've got to do something. Oh, yeah. Off I, do. I, still haven't, oh. I still haven't had one from Ed Skills yet. Actually, okay. I better chase him up. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. Ed's, Ed's, yeah. Ed's a good guy. And all, yeah, he's a good tattooist yeah. as well, to be fair. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. All right, nice one. Right, we'll wrap up there. Rob, thank you very much, mate. Cheers. Thanks for having me, mate. It's been good. Okay. Okay. Stay safe. Thank you, mate.